Hello and welcome to Hexed Encountered Sports Edition. My name is Joe. I'm recording this on the morning of New Year's Day, and well, nothing really says New Year's Day more than college football. So I'm going to take a look here at a game that is currently in early access on Steam, and you can see that right down here. It says early access version 0.0.6. So this game's currently, as I mentioned, available on Steam. Uh, it is a port of a mobile game that has been, I believe, beefed up um, to take advantage of, obviously, the greater computing power available on a PC as opposed to on you know, a mobile device. So it does have kind of the uh, web app mobile application kind of look to it, but it is... Um, you know, for an early access game, it's really enjoyable, and I think uh, there are a lot of features in it that are fun. There is some room for um, growth, and I know they're going to continue to add things to the game. But as it is right now, it's actually really fun to play anyway. So I'm going to show you kind of a little bit of it. There are videos on YouTube already from the developers, I believe, on this game that you can check out and get, you know, kind of the inside view of it from their standpoint this is just my standpoint as a you know player of these type of games uh i do enjoy sports games as you know so this is going to be something that's going to give you fictional players but you do have the ability to edit the uh the team mix so that you can have a pretty realistic uh, mixture of the college teams and conferences and bowl games and things like that so I will hit new game. Now here you see, uh, actually let me go back for a second. There is a, a, um, a Reddit for the game and also it's on Discord. So you can go to those and uh, get, you know, you can interact actually with the people developing the game and other community members and download things like uh, custom or realistic uni uh, universes for the, for the game. So when I go to new game here, you can see custom universe there are people who have created, you know, basically real life versions of uh, college football in terms of the current situation with the teams, the real team names, the real uh, conferences, the real bowl games, etc. Now there is a default universe that, as you can see, has 78 fictional teams, which is obviously far less than uh, what there actually is in uh, FBS college football. But it is uh, also, as it mentions there, it should feel familiar for college football fans. That is true. So you will get a real feel for it. Uh, it does have the big conferences or, you know, essentially things that are recognizable as those. It's not using the real names, of course. But you can recognize them and the schools for what they actually are. Or you can download a custom universe, which is what I did. And it's modeled on um, the real life universe. So let's do that. So once you do that, you come in here, you grab it, open. Uh, that's interesting. I haven't had that happen before. Did I? Oh, it's right here. See, it doesn't filter to uh, the JSON file. So now we are in here and we have the, uh, the list of the setups for the new game. So new game settings. You can change all of this. It's very customizable. This game has a lot of customization in it. So you can say what, what your, you know, your playoff um, format is. Everything from you know, a BCS style, just take the top two teams and have them play a game, to a four-team playoff, which is what we have currently. Uh, six with only the conference champions, eight teams, conference, and then you can have the top eight or the, you know, the conference champs plus two at large, 12 teams, and all the way up to 16 team playoff. So a lot of flexibility there. You can determine when players become draft eligible. Uh, do you want uh, NIL in here, which is, you know, recommended because it's realistic and uh, it's a tool that you can use for recruiting. Uh, realistic injury settings. You can have no injuries, low, medium, or realistic. Un unrestricted transfer. You know, if you want to have the transfer portal for everybody, or you can like lock it down a little bit and say, I only want, you know, second year players to be able to do it, third year players, etc. You can have conference realignment turned on and 
how often you want it to happen. Then you also have two modes. So there's school dynasty mode, which as you can see, it says you control one school forever, trying to build it into a dynasty. Or you can have coach com career mode, which is a lot more fun actually, where you take on the role of your coach and you start a career and you can start your career wherever you want. If you want to take on, you know, one of the big schools, you know, Ohio State, Georgia, Notre Dame, whatever. If you want to be, you know, one of those top notch college program coaches, you can do that. Or you can start at the bottom with, you know, a small conference team, maybe with low prestige and try to build it into something. And then also you can jump from job to job, just like real life coaches do. You will get job offers from other schools where you can go to, um, you know, maybe a bigger program or make a you know lateral move or even go go back to maybe a favorite school or something like that that might not be as good if you're a rebuilding type and you want to keep on taking on challenges you know with small conference teams and so on you can do that so uh, you can actually enter a name in a hometown you can randomize it uh, you know the game comes with a bunch of different names in it so you'll get some uh, some amusing player names in in my opinion some of them are amusing because it's it's got a vast pretty vast mi mixture of names in here that um because obviously with all the college teams you have a lot of college football players recruits etc so the, the pool of names has to be pretty um large and it is and you get some interesting combinations then you can pick your archetype. So what kind of coach do you want to be? And you start at age 30 and you can play up to 50 seasons. So you can actually go from 30 to 79, I guess, uh, playing every season and build up a really lengthy history. And, uh, you know, if you're good, you can actually, you know, win a ton of championships and be coach of the year and all kinds of stuff. So you get the different archetypes. There's defensive coaches and offensive coaches. Um, and so each of these has kind of their own, uh, strengths and weaknesses, I guess you would say. So if you're a defensive genius, for example, just to take the first one, you can see your rank for, for offense is one, but your defense is five. And then you have two for training and two for recruiting. So you do have the ability to do training on players and help them improve. Uh, the players all have potential, um, grades that kind of range from F all the way up to A plus, and that affects how quickly they develop, what their ceiling is, and you can push players up, and you know you can end up having guys who are you know number one overall draft picks into the pros. Um, recruiting, that's kind of obvious. Are you a good recruiter, etc.? So if you went from defensive genius to say like offensive CEO, then you're a little bit more balanced defense, obviously because you're offensive focused. You're not a defensive guy. You have three offense, three training, three recruiting. Obviously, it adds up to 10. So you're going to have some mixture, and you play around with what kind of archetypes you want to be. So if you want to be a defensive type, you can be a defensive type. If you want to be an offensive type, you can be an offensive type. And then you have to pick your preferred schemes. So you have pro style, balanced, and spread for offense. For defense, you have four available ones, the 4-4 four, four split, 4-3, four, 3-4, three, three, four, and nickel. All of them have their, you know, I guess philosophies. So, you know, if you want to be a pro style offense, you can be a pro style offense. If you want to be a balanced offense where you, you know, kind of focus on everything, uh, you can do that. And then you can have the spread type where you're throwing the ball all over the field and, you know, everybody knows what. If you're a college football fan, you know what a spread offense is. And then you can have your play call style, everything from balanced to pass first, run first. And then you can have really heavy. Uh, pass run or an aggressive pass conservative pass and aggressive pass obviously would be more risky throws deep throws things like that where the conservative one you can throw a lot but it's more like a short passing offense um, different uh, play call styles on defense as well so man and zone balanced aggressive or conservative so what I typically try to do because you have to pick your coaching staff as well is if I, I pick what I want and then I try to find coordinators that fit that. So if I'm going to be an offensive CEO with pro style, run first, let's just change this to pass first. What you want to find, if you can, is if you drop, drop this down, you get a whole list of potential people to work with. So here we have pro style, pass first. So this would be a guy who fits my mold. 
Now your coordinators can leave. They can go take other jobs. They can retire. Um, you know, so you have to kind of be aware of that. And they develop just like you do. You can see some of these add up to more than 10, which is what you start at. But you're a young coach, 30 years old, etc. So this guy here, Raymond Jefferson, is pro style pass first, which matches my scheme. So I'll select him. He's five offense. He's got six training and two recruiting. I don't worry about the defensive ratings for um, if I'm an offensive coach and my offensive coordinator. So I'll take him. And we look at our defense. So right now I have four three aggressive man. I'm I'm flexible defensively. Look at this. Here's one. Here's another one. Here's another one. So three of our five choices here actually match what I currently have set. So then it becomes, well, which guy do I want to take? So uh, if you want to stay younger, if you want to try find try to find somebody younger, or maybe you want to bolster something. Like since I'm an offensive coach, do I want you know a defensive genius type who has a maxed out ten is the max, maxed out defensive ability, and then as he levels up, because you level up, you see level seventeen here. As you level up, your you add you get points that you can increase these areas, so you can add training and recruiting for a defensive guy. Again, you wouldn't really need to worry about the offensive side. So we'll we'll take Jaden Santos here. So now I have coaches that actually, let me switch to an aggressive zone, that match the, the head coach. So we're going to be in sync, which is really important. And then you have to pick your school. So again, you can start in the SEC, and you can go all the way down here and start in Conference USA, which is the lowest prestige one that's in the game. And again, this is a custom file. So if you say, well, Conference USA shouldn't be the lowest prestige, you can tweak that. And I'll show you uh, kind of how that works in a, in a bit. But... Let's just start. We'll start somewhere small. We'll start, say, let's start at uh, Ball State. All right. So I'm going to start Ball State. We're in the MAC. The three is, is the school's prestige. The 14 is the school level, which um, I'll show you that here in a second. So we'll hit begin game. We'll just say this is uh, Valencia just to uh, differentiate because that's the coach name. We'll say begin. Now you're creating a, a league with 126 teams, which is 50 more than what the game default database has and almost 8,000 players. So it does say it takes a while. It really doesn't take that long, but it does take, you know, some amount of time to actually build out the, uh, the universe for you. And so here we go. So the first thing you're going to have, you always start in preseason with position changes. So you can look at your players and here are all our players. So here's our senior quarterback, Marco Santiago. He's a field general. All the players have archetypes, and it says the player's archetypes, general type of player they came into college as, and affects their attribute tendencies. So ideally, if you're running, say, a spread offense, you might want to have a gunslinger archetype for your quarterback or something. Uh, field general is pretty standard as long as you're not looking for your quarterback to run a lot or something. So you can see we also have... Um, you know, you can look here as well and filter your. So if you just want to see your QBs here, so we have two field generals and a dual threat. You know, so obviously some of these guys fit better into your offense than others, depending on what your offense is, of course. And you can also, if you hover over his 78 OV, his overall, um, these are kind of Madden esque type overall ratings. You can see his grades in all the various areas. And the, ver the areas for all the players are the same. So even though he's a quarterback, he has blocking ratings, he has defensive ratings, etc. But the only ones you're going to worry about are the passing ones. You know, these are the ones you're going to worry about most. Durability is important. Is he going to get hurt? Um, potential. I mentioned potential. Higher potential is better. So even though he's a senior to the pros, he'll look a little bit more attractive because he's an A potential because that carries over into the pros. Now, there is no pro game in this and... Who knows, down the road, maybe they make a pro version of this where you can carry your guys from the college ranks into the, um, I will say the NFL, but you know, Mark, for licensing reasons, I'm sure it won't be called the NFL, but into the pro ranks. And you get info on his size and speed and so on, right? So you can change them. So you know, you look here and you see your position mix. We're covered everywhere. Sometimes you'll end up where you might not have enough linebackers. You need eight and you might have six. But you've got, you know, nine safeties or something you can 
look at your safeties and say, well, this guy is a safety with a little bit of size. Maybe I'll just make him a linebacker and you can change their position. So just to kind of show you what that would look like if we came in here and let's say we wanted to do it with a freshman. So we look at him, Keegan Wolf, not all that great, 66 overall with a D minus potential. So not great. But if you hit change and come in here, you can see his, this is kind of all his attributes in a, in a graph here where you can, or a chart or whatever, where you can see um, the spider graph, I guess. I think this is what, what this is called because it looks like a web. But uh, you can see how, his, how he's mapped out. And then over, if you hit change position, you can see what his ratings would be if you moved him. So obviously safety is his best spot. He can play corner. He's got corner size, kind of. He'd be a little bit tall for, you know, the typical corner, maybe. But um, he's got corner, corner-ish corner size, so he wouldn't be terrible as a corner. And he could theoretically play linebacker as well. And then, obviously, if you move further down, like, he'd be a terrible offensive lineman or kicker. But you can change them to a new position if you wish. So we don't want to. Um, we'll just save in advance. Right? So we'll go... Save in advance. Yes, advance. We go to the next week. This takes a few seconds usually because it's got to go through and do all the other teams. Then we get training results. Every year you'll get training. This is done automatically. Your guys will develop to you know some extent, and that, that depends a little bit on your team itself and its facilities that we'll talk about here in a moment. But you've got all your all your guys, and you can see our quarterback, Marco Santiago, went from a 78 to an 82, so that's pretty good. He went up by plus 4. 82 is pretty good, uh, especially if you're in a smaller conference like the MAC. So our team is in fairly decent shape, I think, and you go all the way through all 61 guys on your roster. Once you do that, you go to the next stage, which is your game plan install, where you'll pick the schemes you're going to run, which, if you're smart, will model what you picked uh, for your head coach and or coordinator. So here we go. Here's offense. We have defense and our roster. So you can always look at your roster and see what your archetypes are. Maybe you want to tailor to it. Uh, I usually just go with what the coach has, and then I try to make the players fit it. That's kind of my philosophy. So you can see here um, we have pro style pass first for both. So if we stay pro style pass first, it shows us that both the head coach and the OC are in that school. And our effective play calling level is a combination of these two. Now, once you get somebody to be like a little higher, you can actually get it all the way up to about 13. I think 13 is the maximum. At least that's the highest I've seen. And I haven't played. I've played probably 10 or 15 seasons in this so far in various uh, incarnations. Then you can choose how you want your uh, rotations to go in terms of, you know, do you want to use your depth chart more or less basically is what it is you can have a balance you can go with your starters you can play deep rotation it's up to you if you have a deep roster there's no harm in doing a deep rotation typically with the smaller programs early on you're going to have uh clear cut starters and reserves and you might want to just lean a little bit more heavily on the starters because they're better um then you also have your situational game management type stuff do you want to go for two you know, do you want to play conservative? You want to use analytics? Do you always want to go for two and be aggressive? You know, onside kicks and fourth downs. Same thing. Conservative, aggressive, only when required, always go for it kind of thing. So do you really want to be a gambler or do you want to be conservative, etc.? Then defense is kind of the same thing. 4-3 aggressive zone, set it to that. Our play calling is a 13. This is what I'm talking about. If you get a guy who's a 10 and he's in sync with the coach, the head coach, you get a 13. So our defense, um, our effective play calling for defense is going to be pretty high. So our defense should typically not get caught flat-footed. We should be uh, pretty pretty good in terms of play calling. Once that's done, you hit save and advance again. It'll give you a, do you really want to advance? Now we come to recruiting. I'll be honest, recruiting is a little bit challenging for me. I struggle with it a little bit. But you can actually have it be run automatically. So if we go to recruiting... This is pretty pretty in depth. You have all the players that are available. Obviously, at Oha, uh, Ball State, rather, you're not going to have these top notch guys. This is the number one overall recruit. Uh, he's an offensive lineman. The positions are more position group, so you don't have free safety, strong safety. You have safety. 
You don't have center, tackle, guard. You have offensive line. You don't have defensive end, defensive tackle. You have defensive line. Linebacker, same thing. Um, quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, tight ends. There isn't a lot of differentiation within the position groups. It's literally just a position group. So um, we can go in here and you can look at the players. And one thing you can do is sort, sort by interest score. So you can find guys that might be moderately interested in your school. And again, they're going to start, they're also going to be by overall ranking. So I kind of go through here and look for my team and there's my team. And obviously the size of this will indicate, you know, the ones on the left are the leaders. So, you know, this guy has a moderate interest in Ball State. Um, we might not have anybody who really prefers us. And, but you can go through pages of this and try to find your players. And then you have actions that you can do with them. So let's just say, let's look at this guy. You have view details. You can see his rankings for the top five teams that he's considering. You can see if he's got any visits scheduled because you can schedule visits for your recruit to come to a game and watch your team play. What kind of priorities do they have? So here's our school. You'll always be on the left. Then you have the five other schools that the, uh, that the, the five or however many, it can be up to five other schools the, the recruit is considering and what's important to them from playing time all the way to like NIL money and the importance of those to them. So he doesn't care about facilities. So facilities not important. None of these schools actually have all that great facilities. Ours obviously are pretty bad. Um, so they look for playing time, how close they are to home, the prestige of the school, which they don't care about, which again is a benefit for us because we don't have much prestige. Stadium atmosphere, again, our stadium is not great and it's important to him. So he he would be more inclined to go to a school that has a great stadium atmosphere, anything that's maximum, that's what they're really interested in. Academics, and again, the NIL deal where you can throw money at them. Um, so you go through that. I'm going to skip it. Um, but if you go back to your home screen, you can do your practices as well. So practices, you can set a default focus. So we know that um, we picked uh, pass. So we're going to go quick passing and our defense will be, let's just say limit short passing and save. So that's your default practices. Now you can do a practice where you basically you just pick a play. So let's say we wanted to do something like this strong stretch, just basic outside run. And then defense, we know we're a 4-3, so you can pick a 4-3 defense. And say we want to play man or something, or although actually we're zone. So let's just pick a zone defense and say we're going to do cover two sink. Now we're going to run this play against this defense with our offense, our defense, right? Run practice. And it'll give you an evaluation of how well your team ran that play against this defense and vice versa, how well your defense handled that play. And then down here you get stats for how many they run it a hundred times, you know, what the statistics are, you know, um, our top back here, ne Nehemiah Lou did a pretty good job on that one. And then you, you can always go back and look at it later. And then how many, how your defensive guys did as far as the tackles and tackles for loss. So you can drill down and, get an idea. I mean, the, the, the main purpose of practice, it says in preseason, you can practice offense and defense plays to learn more about your team strengths and weaknesses. So go back to, uh, to here. Now you have your trainings. I mentioned that you can do, you have the training rating, you can pick trainings. So for quarterbacks, for example, if you come in to perform training, uh, your head coach, it tells you who handles what head coach handles the kind of the physical stuff, speed, evasion, strength, then your OC handles all the offensive stuff, your def DC handles defensive stuff, and your head coach handles kicking. So if we wanted to work on his accuracy, which is actually pretty good, you'll see his potential gains are between one and four. So let's just say we want to train him on accuracy. Accuracy, his accuracy went up by two. So it was 87, now it's 89. Now if we wanted to go to like our kickers, since the head coach does kickers, you can say, okay, Sean Chacon, we're going to give you, uh, and you, you, you have, you don't like kickers, just like every other group, there's kickers. So that includes your punters. So you can kind of look at them and see who's a better punter or who's a better kicker. And sometimes it's the same guy and he can do both. Um, 
In this case, uh, this is all pretty close. He's a slightly better punter. So if you wanted to say, I want to uh, make you a, you know, give, give you a little bit extra punt power, you can do that. And then you look at your other guy and he's obviously not as good. So Ch Chacon is going to end up being our starting punter and kicker basically. But if you want to help uh, Antonio Nash get a little better, he's only a sophomore. You can say, let's work on your kick accuracy or something like that. So now I've used two of my head coach trainings. If you go back to quarterback, I also used one of my offensive coordinator trainings. You can also just say auto assign trainings and then the, the game will go through and let the, you know, it'll figure out who to do it, what to do. It uses all of them. You can see uh, the DC, he's not a real strong uh, trainer. So his is only a plus 10 breakthrough chance. The offensive coordinator is pretty good at it in general relative to the, <laughs> to the rest of the staff. So he gets a plus 30. Um, and that's, you know, that's how you do it. So you can go through and do eight practices and see, you know, try different plays and see how they do. Uh, you can do your recruiting. Uh, you can also, like I said, turn on, um, if you go to my targets, you can turn on auto recruiting by clicking on here. Now auto recruiting's on, so it'll go through and it'll do action. So head, head coach pitch. These are the actions you can take. So they'll say, um, when you get to ones where you can do a visit and you go to v details and go to the visits and then you can schedule a visit from there. So that's how recruiting works. So once this is all done, you go through this multiple times, spring one, spring two, summer one, summer two. Uh, you also have things like this is the my team page. You can look at your team. You'll get an idea of your talent, uh, your roster breakdown where you can go into the details and you'll see the classes and their overall ratings. So that's a good way to look at at a glance. Like these are the guys I'm losing for sure. Everybody who's in my senior column here, there aren't a ton of seniors, which is kind of nice. Um, and then you can also see the rest of your roster. Uh, you have a game plan, depth chart. You'll use this when you get ready to play games, your practice screen, your playbook. So you can see all the plays that are available for you to run and you can make some of them like a favorite. So if you like your inside zone, you can just click that and it's now a favorite. Um, and then you have your coach's office because you can make promises to players for playing time. They'll show up in here. Um, if somebody's thinking they might transfer because they're not happy, you're not winning enough or they don't play enough or whatever. I mean, here your coach integrity is uh, tied to your promises. When you make promises and keep them, your integrity goes up. When you make promises and don't keep them, your integrity goes down. Once you get higher integrity, players will trust you more and it'll be a little, it'll be help you with recruiting. So that's, that's nice. It's, a good idea uh, to, to try to make promises that you can keep. And you, you'll make promises to players who are looking to transfer. So if your quarterback, he's a redshirt sophomore or junior, and he wants to play. And, you know, maybe last year the guy ahead of him was better, so he didn't play. But now maybe he's your top guy. It's, that's an easy one. You promise, hey, kid, I'm going to start you this year. And you do. And you get, you know, you, you make your promise, you keep it, you're all good. Um. Then you might have some where you're just so deep at, say, running back, and it's like your fourth guy on the depth chart, and I want 100 carries. Well, you're not going to get 100 carries because the three guys ahead of you are all better. So, um, again, it's a risk-reward somewhat. Some of them are real easy, and you know it's a layup to make that promise and keep it, so you do it. And some of them, it's like, well, that's going to be tough. I might have to play this guy ahead of players that are better than him. And maybe if it's close, you do it. If it's not close, uh, you don't. I mean, I've let guys walk, and in some cases, if a guy's like a freshman or a sophomore and you know that you're going to lean on him in future seasons, you might want to keep him happy so he doesn't leave. Um, if you have the money, you can also throw NIL money at him in some cases to avoid having to make a promise. Just say, here's $250,000, stick around uh, kind of thing. League info, this is kind of nice. You can look at all your team rankings. You can see, you know. Alabama's one, Ohio State, Florida, Georgia, right? A lot of SEC up here, some Big Ten. Um, so this is your rankings, and if you scroll down far enough, you'll come to your school. It'll be highlighted. There it is, Ball State. So we, we don't have a number, but you can actually count down. And it uh, once you get up into the ranks, there, there really isn't a rank number yet. Once you get into the season, there'll be numbers here. 
so you can see where you are and then you will move up and down depending on how you play you have conference standing so you can see where you are in your conference once we're playing postseason games once they're once we're at that point your league schedule so you can see all of the uh those schedules for the specific weeks. Everybody. Um, top performers, so it's top stat guys, the award winners. Then you get stats for your team for um, look, just looking at your stats and your history, which is nice too. You can look at Hall of Fame, Pro Draft, recruiting classes, rankings, all kinds of stuff. The game is really deep. There's a lot to it. It's really, really, I, I think this is an excellent game with a lot of promise so you can always go back to your dashboard which is also um you know this is if you click home you come to your dashboard basically so this is where you basically navigate through the game we do save in advance hit yes we'll move on to the next week so i'm going to actually pause here and i'm going to quickly advance through the rest of the preseason to get to the game so i can show you what gameplay looks like so hang on here So once you get through the, um, the, the off-season stuff, you get to your preseason expectations. So your, your AD is going to have expectations for you, and he's going to tell you what those are. You'll also see his current opinion. Since this is our first year, you start at 50. So not too high, not too low. He wants you to win three games. If you win three games, he's happy. His opinion will go up. You win more, his opinion goes up by more. If you don't, it goes down. Eventually, if it goes down far enough, he will fire you. So you want to try and keep him ha happy. They also have archetypes just like everybody else. He's a hothead, which isn't great. So if you do badly, he's more likely to get angry and fire you, basically. Then you also have Ball State boosters here. So you have your boosters, and they have different levels. Diamond is the highest. I'm actually surprised that this school has two diamonds because that's pretty good for a small school. Tells you what they're giving the school as a base. So between these two guys, you're getting uh, $10.5 million. And then you get another 4.5 from our gold donor. And then they have their own likes. So he likes pass D, he likes team D, and he also likes pass offense. And then it'll tell you here with the tool tip that this determines what kind of bonus gift conditions the booster might have. And they change after a while. They can. This one has eight years left. This one is um, brand new. So it has 10 years left. That's what the little sunburst there looks like. And this one has three years left. And they'll tell you um, a little further on what they want you to do. Well, actually, they tell you right here. I'm sorry. So hold opponents to less than 240 passing yards. Difficulty's hard. Hold opponents to less than 45% third down. That's fairly, you know, average difficulty. And then you have an easy one. Have a single player record 690 receiving yards. Some of that's kind of a little bit out of your control as far as specific players. If they're healthy, you run a play, um, they may, the quarterback may throw to them or may throw to someone else. You have multiple receivers after all. Um, once you do this, you can advance into, there's really nothing to do there. It's all informational. So now we're at a game week. So game week, you have all your, your weekly checklist here. So you can go into your recruiting, do your recruiting actions. I still have auto recruiting enabled, so I don't have to worry about that. But again, if you wanted to here, you can see we're scheduling a week two visit with Colin Santos. So if we come in here and we click the recruit visits, you can see he's scheduling for week two. We're playing Kent State at home. Um, he's got a week six visit. So you can see all the things that, and this one here, this guy, Chase Lamb, we've offered him a scholarship. Once you offer a scholarship, you just click this button and they offer a scholarship. So that's how that works. Up here, you'll see all your needs. So once you do that, you can go back to your home screen, your dashboard. It's checked off because it's done. It was checked off when we got here because I have auto recruiting turned on. Practice focus. So later on, once teams have played some games, you'll get an idea of how they do both off, uh, defensively and offensively. But you can see by looking here, they like to run a pro style run first. So your defensive focus might be stop the run. Then on offense, they play a 4-4 split conservative man. So I would just keep my, qu my quick passing and hit lock focus. Now that's our focus for practice. Now you can go in and do practices again. 
say I want to practice, right? So you're going to run offensive plays against the opponent's defensive playbook. It works just like it did uh, before, except that you choose what you're working on, offense, defense, or scrimmage, which is just your offense against your defense. So in this case, our, our offense would be playing our defense, but our defense is going to try to mimic the uh, uh, Charlotte's defense because that's our opponent for week one. So you can do that, and it'll show you, again, all your previous practice results will be available, so you can look at that. Um, then you can quickly kind of navigate. The other check mark, check uh, checklist items are depth chart and game plan. So you can just go depth chart over here. And then what I'll usually do is just do uh, auto sort. And you can lock, guys. So if you say I always, or you can lock a uh, position group rather, and say I, you know, Santiago is my guy, so I'm going to lock it, and he's never going to not be the guy. So you can do that if you wish. Um, guys will get hurt and they'll drop to the bottom, or you know, maybe they won't drop at all, but their ratings go down enough that you might want to consider not playing them while they're hurting. So you'll be able, and you can always manually move guys around. So if I want Mathis to be my top back, I can do that. Um, you have offense, defense, and of course special teams where you can see your kickers. So here, as I mentioned, Chacon is our kicker and our punter. Nash will back up at both spots. Once you've done that, you go to your game plan. And this is just, do I want to change anything in here um, as far as our rotation and so on? And do we want to do run first instead of pass first, et cetera? So you can make tweaks like that. And you can, again, do offense or defense. Maybe you don't want to be aggressive for whatever reason. You can change it up if you wish to. So once you do that, you go back. Let's go back here. And now you go to the game. So if we just click this, you're going to go to the game. It'll tell you what they're doing, what you're doing. Uh, if you have visitors, they would show up here. So we do have... Um, George or Jorge, maybe Spencer visiting. He's a uh, defensive lineman, two star, 60 overall, F potential. You also scout guys. I didn't talk about that in recruiting, but you scout the recruits. So do play game. It'll ask you if you did all your checklist stuff. You hit yes, start. Now the game is here. You get your, you get your field. Uh, you're in. Call play mode, you can do game log, summary, look for impact plays, uh, basically like a highlight reel kind of thing, and then box score. You can have, uh, you can do a sim until, and then have it do, you know, sim until the next change of possession or whatever, or halftime or the whole game. You can ask for a suggestion. So we're, we're getting the ball. Char Charlotte's kicking off. So saying defend kickoff deep. Um, so you can do that. You can say sim for me, which lets the AI pick your play, or you can just say sim play if you've got a play selected. So we, we got the kickoff. It was a touchback, apparently, or at the 25. Now, once you're on offense, you look in and say, okay, why don't we run a bubble screen? And you can do that, or you can click change play and say, well, you know, I want to do, you know, let's do a play action boot flow or something. Once you do that, again, if you click sim play, it runs the play you picked. If you pick sim for me, it'll run whatever the AI picks. So we got a nice 18 yard completion there for to Salvador Tatum from Santiago. And then if you go to the box score, you can see he's one for one for 18 yards and Tatum has one catch for 18 yards. Go back to to call plays and you just compete. So if you click suggestion, you can see what they do and you just hit sim play. You can also just hit sim for me and then you don't know what they're going to do, but you can. So we did a six yard run and it'll tell you here. That was a fullback fake halfback flip from the I pro I formation. They were running cover three, 46 beat a bear rather. And you can just keep, keep doing it like that. And then hopefully you score and we scored a touchdown. Ball state start touchdown, missed the extra point. And um, that's basically how you do the play. And then the same thing for defense, right? So the kickoff is done. They have the ball. Now you can see your defense suggestions and you can say sim play. You know, you can do sim for me and they're moving the ball quickly too. And they're probably going to score as well. And they scored a field goal. So that's how, that's how it goes. You can also have clock strategy where you want to chew clock, go up tempo, just be normal, whatever. And as I mentioned, you can say, I want to sim the whole game. Boom. 
Game's over. We won 40 to 10. Check out box score. Santiago had a big game, 36 of 45, 432 yards. We got a couple touch, uh, four touchdown runs. So, uh, pretty, pretty strong performance. Once you do that, you hit finish game in advance week. And that is how this game works. So, I'm, we're, we're 40 minutes deep. I don't want to go too much longer. So, I'm just going to wrap this up. Um, hopefully, you've got an idea of what this game's all about. As I said, I enjoy it a lot. It's pretty addicting. Um, my son was watching me play it, and he ended up buying it too, so he could play himself. So there's no multiplayer right now. Maybe there will be down the line. I don't know what the plans are in that regard. But again, um, they do have Reddit and Discord. You can actually interact with the developers, tell them what you like, what you don't like, maybe get some input into what happens. You can also download other people's stuff in terms of the uh, the file. I know I mentioned I would show that um, for time reasons, I probably am I'm not going to now. It's a JSON file, so it's a text file. If you're familiar with JSON, you can figure out how to uh, how to edit it. It's not overly um, complicated. It's pretty straightforward. It's very human readable. So um, definitely check that out. I will post links to uh, the game on uh, the game's links for you know Reddit and on Steam and so on. So you can check out the game if you have Steam. Just search for it. It is. Uh, Football Coach College Dynasty is the name of it. So that's going to do it. Uh, my name is Joe. Thank you, as always, for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, this has been Hexed Encountered. And until next time, happy gaming.